This is acting profiler Ser Seraphine Goddard, outside consultant G324, here for the purpose of profiling case number 613, as well as offering my own evaluation of this office after some disciplinary action was required. As to the case at hand, the first sighting of the subject was at an art exhibit. A sock puppet was involved, strangely. Uh, based on initial reports of the subject, we've pulled up an archival report log from the last time an entity like this was sighted, which was as far back as, as 20 BCE Nubia using the current dating standards. Uh, using Dorm's special technology to communicate with agents in the past, I'll be reviewing Kandake Duwana, a Nubian warrior queen, as she reports uh, as part of this case. Also joining us for today's debriefing is, is junior dorm agent Daniel Renfro, who was also on the case. Now, let me see if I know of any agents who were on the scene at the very beginning. It looks like an agent Jane Lee was there, so I will have to see what she had to say. Okay, so the dress I was wearing was based off a concept of con candy, right? So it was super voluminous and puffy at the beginning of the night, really large and beautiful. And anytime someone touched me, it would just kind of like deflate a little bit. So at the end of the night, it would be a totally different dress. It was so beautiful and I was so excited. But when I wore it to the Rose Gardens, for this huge new art exhibit that was all about the shape of color. I mean, chaos erupted there. And I did not get to do the final show for the train of my dress, which I was very disappointed about. But anyway, that's where I first saw the monster. What did it, what did it look like? How did you recognize it? Oh my God. Oh, uh, it was insane. I was standing there at the corner um, with like the minister of like foreign affairs for Los Angeles, or at least that's what he, told me he was, um, but we were enjoying some champagne uh, when I could see like something happening in the distance. And I saw this guy in a white satin tuxedo kind of almost get like picked up. Like it was almost like someone scooped him up and he was just kind of like rising up over the crowd. And I thought, oh, is this like a guy on stilts for like a show? Like, is this the shape of color? What shape is white? But then he just started to move his arms and legs in this really creepy jangly way uh and that's when everyone started bolting out of the art exhibit so uh, i mean i ran under a table because i kind of i didn't want to get my dress messy just one last follow-up question for you for now the man in the the white tuxedo so he was the creature or he was being grabbed by the creature at this point i couldn't tell i think he was being grabbed by the creature but Oh man, Pam Walker came on the scene and I, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was, a, it was a really good time for everyone. Excellent. So appears to be a creature that was frequenting an art exhibit of some sort about the shape of color. I, I don't get modern art, um, but apparently it puppeteered a man, perhaps, or was the puppet master. I went over to Agent Pamela Walker to find out more information about the situation, because apparently she was there as well. You know, there's this thing. 
feel feel how you might about America and our military system. It's complicated. But there is something to be said for its ability to just not let young people talk. It's so, so informative to me when it comes to just sh- 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 not talking. And, and some might even say, you're a puppet of the American will. And, you know, I'm not necessarily proud of the majority of the work that I've done under the flag. But that Jane, I'm patient. I am a patient person. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, this Jane, she, re- she really, I just wish I could tell her to, to, you know, I wish there was a ranking system here. That's all I was saying. I just wish there was a, you get it, Seraphine. You get it. You and understand actually, that. Yes, you actually, have to have in regards less. to rank, it's actually Profiler Goddard, if you could. Thank you. You're absolutely right. My apologies. Well, I will just continue with, yes, I arrived on the scene, uh, I drove up in my Jeep Cherokee and and just at the same time that this man dressed in white satin was being literally plucked as though he was being pulled by strings. And then as if out of nowhere, cut as he was at his height, the strings were cut and he fell. And yes, it was kind of cool if you think about it. Now, now that is a shape of color, blood on the on the floor. But uh, that wasn't part of the exhibit, no. So I suppose a spatter is indeed a shape. That's my point in saying that that it's a shape. You don't. You just rephrase what I said. I'm, I am keeping a report of what you're saying, so that is actually part of what I'm supposed to do. Well, yeah, but I just said that, so. I, like, did I not explain it clearly enough for you? I, I'm just trying to do a good job. Your your job is doing, you're doing fine. I was just making sure that I understood your report clearly and it was clear and now we're okay. Are you okay? I'm fine. I um, may or may not, I, I, I may have, I may have filed a report also on Agent Jane Lee, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know about that in just a little bit. Oh, no, I had the report over. They, they gave me the report you filed. Is, is there some... Tension here in the organization? No, ma'am. You can speak to me about it. That's like why I'm here. So if there's information you would wish to tell me about the operation, I'm happy to take it down. No, ma'am. Okay. I will speak to you more about this later. Um, but after I spoke to Agent Walker, I I really wanted to speak to our, our guests, our... our, our tr- our supporting agent, our junior agent, Daniel Renfro, who, who I believe had something to contribute to the case. So I, I did speak to him. Hi, Daniel. How are you today? Hi, Miss Goddard. Uh, hello. So, um, you look good. You look Oh, Still very thanks. good. Thanks. My dad is running up the stairs. Have you heard that noise? That I'm sure just, he is. Um, so I go to BB New Earth uh, Charter School, and we went on a field trip. Um, and I wasn't sure if they were going to let me go because I kind of had gotten into a little trouble before them. But then I just signed the permission slip, and I went. Uh, and... So we were in the back of the bus. I was handing out pixie sticks and we were like ah, down in the, the pixie sticks and we were we were feeling very happy. Uh, but as we uh, drove by, we were going to this art thing. Uh, we saw this white figure sort of floating and then dropping to the ground. Uh, and I realized that um, I had seen that before. It was the the marionetter. Um, oh, and so you know, we we kept going, and and when we parked the bus, we saw a lady in a cotton candy dress. It looked so good. I wanted to eat it. It was like fluffy looking. Um, yes, I've been told it's the latest in fashion. 
yeah, I, I don't know, but it, it looked tasty. Um, and so then we, um, we ate more candy and, um, <laughs> Jacob Milligan, uh, tried to step in it in that mass of, of what was that guy? Uh, uh, but he slipped and he fell down. He slipped in the corpse of the man who fell. Yeah. So you were being allowed to continue to play around an active crime scene. Uh, yeah, charter schools, you know. See, well, thank you for your report. I'm sure there will be more questions for you if you would be patient. Um, okay. So we have a being known as a marionetta that uses strings to puppet around human beings and apparently drops them and liquefies them in some way or spatters them into liquids. So I don't know if it absorbs their form in some way or if it was the impact of the fall. I guess I'll have to find out from more from the agents to get a clearer answer on that question. Um, but I will, I remember there was something going on between Agent Lee and Agent Walker. And I want to find out more about this because it does determine the nature of the dorm office. So I went back to Agent Lee to find out more about her experience at the scene. Yeah, so what was crazy was people were kind of astonished when this guy was picked up and like splattered, but it's a freaking art exhibit. You don't know if it's part of it or not. And I think the people who were running the whole show kind of didn't know either. So they were just, everyone clapped when it happened. They were just like, oh, amazing. So I stayed and then Pam Walker came in and, you know, she's wearing her army fatigues per usual, and she did not fit in. So at that point, in order to investigate this further, I had to dress up in one of my backup cocktail dresses that I keep in one of my garment bags on site. So Sorry, what, required, what required a costume change on your part? Pam Walker, I had to put new clothes on her. So that she could fit in with everyone. Oh, you gave Agent Walker a cocktail dress to wear. I thought you meant you changed your own clothes. Okay. Yeah. Now, Agent Lee, I want to go back to a statement you made a moment ago. So you just assumed this monster attack was an art show and you didn't leap into action as an agent of dorm to try to solve oh, it? Oh, no. I knew it was like a monster. I saw the blood. I know what it smells like when a body hits the ground. Uh, it's not good. So I wanted to investigate further, but I also didn't want to cause a general panic for everyone. And then there was like kids there too, who kind of saw everything happening. Cause you know, it's like next to all these museum complexes. So when agent Pam Walker came in, I wanted her to help me investigate. So that's when I put on this uh, mermaid gown on her. It's really, really pretty. There's sequins and it's pastel. And like, I was able to kind of shuffle her into a tent and get her into this whole getup. Um, she looks so good. Yes, that does explain her strange photos from the crime scene. I one last question for you, Agent Agent uh, Lee, before I I pause for a moment. When the creature hit, when the when the man dropped to the ground, did he liquefy or was he just very a, a bloody mess? Oh, he liquefied. Like there was no organs left anymore or like muscle mass or anything. I think that's why everyone thought it was an art exhibit was because there was nothing solid there. It was just liquid. And it wasn't even that high of a fall. He was just swept up, kind of jiggled his arms around a whole lot. And then when he fell, it was just like blood and not even guts, just like poo smears and bacteria all splattered on the ground. It was kind of beautiful sounds disgusting well thank you for your your reports so this, i have a more solid idea now this marionette does in some way liquefy its victims and in in doing so perhaps it drains them of their corporealness i'm not sure um but i did want to i did want to follow up with agent walker but I, before i did so i wanted to speak to our our historical agent uh, I wanted to speak to Kandake Juwana to see if if she had encountered anything along the lines of this. Hello, Kandake. Hello, great oracle. Thank you for visiting me and letting me tell my story of of 
my uh, adventures in hunting the abnormal things in nature. I encountered something that I wanted to tell you, Oracle, or Great Oracle today, because you have requested and you say it must be that I report everything to the Oracle. Yes, we appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, Great Oracle. Thank you. I, I encountered something very strange because I was uh, at a party for my family. You know, I have a lot of family members. Um, I have my four sons and they have lots of cousins. Everyone wants to be an heir to the throne, but only my oldest son will be unless he is killed, of course. And uh, God forbid. God forbid. Um, we were at a function for one of the cousins' birthdays. And we have something in our culture that before, before, for very long, for many generations, it was called the dancing sickness. And mm. what would happen is that usually someone who is wearing all white, which happens sometimes for special occasions, uh, someone who is wearing all white will become uh, just swept away with the emotion of the event and they start moving strangely. And we call it the dancing sickness because they are not quite dancing and they look sick. They are just moving their limbs in all strange ways. And so that person that happened to my uncle Samil, Uncle Samil was swept away with the dancing sickness and just starts, he starts floating in the air and, and moving in strange ways. I'm, I'm sorry to hear of your loss. I'm sure that was very hard for you. Oh, uh, he was not lost because oh. I, uh, I, Kandake Duwana, trained warrior queen and monster and demon hunter, I intervened. Oh, what did, what did you do to intervene? Well, uh, I, I had a feeling that this was not natural. And I know I knew the phrase of the dancing sickness, but I just had a feeling that something was holding him up there. And so I looked up and I have a little, um, I, I created something from my binoculars. Um, I put a filter of carbon and seaweed and I blessed it, I prayed over it. And I looked through it and I can see things in other realms. And so I used it. I used my, my filter and I looked above Uncle Samil and I saw, I saw it. I saw the thing that was holding him there. So it was a being from another realm? Yes, it was in and it had crossed into our realm, but it was invisible to us. I see. Thank you for your reports. The Oracle will take more from you later, I'm sure. Thank you will, for your hard work. Your diligent servant, I will be here waiting for more questions. Thank you. So it appears the marionetter is attracted to people dressed in all white, and it appears that it is a being that comes from another realm and is invisible to the naked human eye, but can be detected through other means. Um, with this information, I definitely followed up with the reports of an agent, Winona Bishop, who, according to paperwork, is very effective at taking stock of what different beings do. So I wanted to hear what she had to say about the matter. So Jane needed a ride to this art show and uh, I have a, as you know, converted Dodge Ram. Uh, so I, I drove her and um, Agent Pam Walker uh, declined the ride. I'm not sure, maybe she wanted to make a dramatic entrance. Um, don't know how you compete. Uh, uh, cotton candy dress. You know, I actually really like dressing up. <clears throat> what were you wearing on that night? Like what I always wear. Oh, sorry. You said you like dressing up. So I thought maybe you had, I apologize for assuming. Uh, no, I, I, uh, I don't, I don't go to parties sometimes though. I do dress up at home. Um, when I'm at home, which is almost never because I live in my truck. Anyway, uh, uh, I had parked my car uh, out by the, you know, you got a garden, you got like a, an area where they put all the, the trimmings and things like that. I just parked it in the back there. I like to park. I don't like to park in the parking lots. Basically, I don't like to be near people 
it's very loud for me. It's very noisy, the extra talking, the spirits and ghosts and things like that, and people thinking too loud. It's a, it's a lot for me. So I, I generally park further away. How frequently do you speak with spirits and ghosts? All the time. So if I asked you, this marionette, was it a spirit or a ghost itself? I was told by another operative that it was from another realm. Was that the yeah. spirit realm or somewhere else? Yeah. Um, so uh, I popped on my binoculars, which I had treated with uh, carbon seaweed, and then you have to put a prayer over them. And I just, I used those to just sort of scope out the area. And uh, yeah, I spotted the marionette. -er. It's it's almost a misnomer to call it the marionetter. I see why it got that name because it's sort of floating in the sky above its victim. Um, but the strings are more like fingertips that kind of float down. They're very long, very slim fingertips. And um, you know when you make a puppet like out of a stuffed animal or I don't know something that you have to remove the stuffing. That's what happens with this, oh. those fingertips. I'm sorry. Did I disgust you with this detail? No, I was actually fascinated by the detail. I was saying, ah, this, this is actually explaining a lot of information that I was confused about. Yeah, it does explain a lot, doesn't it? Like how yes. these victims liquefy. So it pulls them out like stuffing. Yeah, or it goes in and it, wiggles for a while until everything just oozes out. Yeah. Yeah, you okay. can save it. You can save a victim if you're fast. Um, Does it consume this when it liquefies it or is it what is the pro what is the purpose for it? Why does anyone puppeteer? The sheer pleasure of control. Well, I guess I understand that a little bit. Thank you, Agent Bishop. Yeah, no problem. So it appears this marionette actually does not use strings. It uses its own fingertips that appear to be strings to those who might not know what they're looking at. And by using those fingertips, it drains its victims of their insides, apparently just out of pure sick pleasure for its own gain. Um, I wanted to check in with Agent Pam Walker to deal with the hostility between her and Agent Lee. So I, I did go to her. Uh, Agent Walker, I understand that there was some embarrassment between you and, and Agent Lee. And there have been some reports from an Agent Arsenal Roy to K that at least one or more of the agents in the field had come down with this dancing sickness, as we've heard. Um, have you been tested for it? It, it no, ma'am. I uh, wasn't aware of, of that fact that someone had been infected. I thought we contained the marionette on the scene. I had not been told that in the report, so that's interesting information. No one had let me know that it had been contained. Um, well, I was told that you were putting on, you were given a mermaid dress with pastel, pastel. is not my color. Yes, and look apparently, at my undertones of my skin. Yes, and apparently you stripped down to your white underwear to get out of the dress, and that might have been why... They are national issue underwear! Perhaps. I'm just putting out... Maybe maybe we should send you to medical to be examined Just for because possible. I dance poorly doesn't mean... Listen, I didn't sign up for secret operatives. I didn't sign up to be spies like us where we pretend to be things i am a servant and she thinks i have to be in a dress i agent agent walker i i apologize for you being forced to change into clothing that you did not find comfortable that is you not you think i'm a bad dancer is that why you think i have the dancing I, 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 and is like i'm gonna eat your stomach now i can assure you i've not seen you dance so i have no idea what it looks like would you care to demonstrate now no well, then I can't rule on your quality of dancing either way. But I would like to please ask you to go to medical 
immediately and be checked to see if you've been infected by this dancing sickness because Arsenal Roy's information is usually very good. Well, according should, to my file. Should I strip down to my civvies right now? No, I, actually, I think you should never do that. I think that's uh, that's a personal preference thing. It's not something that anyone should ask you to do. That was maybe perhaps why the monster was attracted to you, is what I am. Mean. I'm scared. I understand. I'm not, I'm not normally scared, but I'm scared. Well, Agent Walker, that is what they're there to do, is to help you. So please, please go immediately and be checked out so you can be cleared in case you are clear. There's no reason to be afraid if you don't know. Knowing is is half the battle, you might say, as as a soldier like yourself once said. Uh, Joseph, G.I. Joseph. Yes. Thank you. Oh, there was something that I believed that Agent Daniel Renfro was not telling me, and I went back to him to see if I could find out more from him. He always is holding a little bit of information back. Agent Renfro? Uh, yes. Would you like some juice? No, I I, ha I have water, thank you. I'm using a ecological safe straw, so. I, I got plenty of juice if you want some. Yes, you just um, like juice. That 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 night that that happened, um, I remember seeing Agent Walker uh, and Agent Bishop and the cotton candy dress lady was actually Agent Lee. Um, and they started they started dancing funny all three of them all um, started three dancing of them. funny and agent walker started like taking her clothes off and you know it was just after labor day um so i guess it was still maybe a little warm but but um it you know it wasn't that warm i just thought it was funny that that she was so warm that she was taking her clothes off uh and they were they were dancing it was weird <laughs> and jacob bannigan and i <laughs> that was funny and we started dancing too and then we would like tag people and they would start dancing and suddenly everybody was dancing it was like um it was like when we had that school dance at bb new earth charter school uh except everybody was dancing together because usually when when we had those dances at school the, the boys all sort of stand on one side and the girls all stand on the other side and there's not that much dancing but this was like lots of dancing so you're saying the entire room became infected by the dancing sickness yes i, I have a question for you agent renfro junior agent renfro did the people dance before you tagged them or was your tagging perhaps what that's what I thought. Agent Renfro, you know better than to add chaos to an active investigation scene. But it was funny. I have to ask you a question point blank, and I hope you'll understand the, the severity of it. Did you summon the marionetter? Agent Renfro, look at me. Look at me right in the eyes. Did you summon the marionetter? Maybe. You know we've talked about this. <sighs> Come on, the Mar marionette is funny. A man like, died. And they don't- and, Agent and, Renfro, a man died. And now my agents, well, the agency's agents, the department's agents, are in danger. So your pranks, while amusing to you, have been harmful to others. And I want you to sit here and think about what you've done. I remembered in the logs that that Kandake Duwana did say that she had defeated the creature, and I imagine that she probably had some more information about it, so I went back to the archives to look for that. Hello, Kandake. Hello, Great Oracle. Hello. Did you have any more thoughts about this dancing sickness that you were aware of yes of course of course i at this point knew it was not a dancing sickness it was a creature that was making people dance in this way and so i saw it i so used my my filter my special binoculars to see it 
and uh, I had I was wearing the binoculars at the party from now on. I decided to just keep wearing them so I could track the creature. It lifted Uncle Samil into the air and he began to dance strangely. And at first the children thought it was a game and they started dancing too. And then, and then something changed because it started to scoop up other people with its tentacles. See, it looks like a large octopus, but, but it has three heads and one large eye on each head. And its tentacles, the ends of its tentacles look like fingertips, very long, slender fingertips. It is very frightening. I was terrified. I can imagine. And so I was tracking the the uh, creature. It had some. It began to pick up others with its tentacles. And uh, what I learned is that it's not just the person wearing white who who gets the sickness. They are the first person that it can see with its eyes. It sees the person wearing white because they are brightest, and it scoops them up first, and then it can find the people around him. So the white is almost like a beacon, like perhaps the way an anglerfish attracts fish near to it in the yes. water, but reverse a predator that is attracted to the brightness. Yes, exactly. This is very valuable information. Kandake, thank you so much. This will be very important to our current investigation. Oh, wonderful. Great oracle. Thank you. I appreciate your time, your highness. I wanted to check back in with uh, Agent Walker to see if she had been examined by medical and if she was okay. Um, Agent Walker, are you, are you okay, Agent Walker? Well, Agent Walker seems to <laughs> oh. oh dear. It does appear that Agent Walker is actually infected by yeah, this dancing it's sickness. It's oh. This is not how I intended to spend my day, and so can we get can we get a containment team to to deal with Agent Walker, please? And make sure you're wearing a hat. Too. Don't wear any white into the room. Wear something dark so it can't see you as easily. <laughs> yes, you're having a very good time, Agent Walker. I'm going to let containment deal with you, and I'm going to check in with Agent Bishop. Thank you. Yes, Agent Bishop, I, 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 you're very skilled at understanding these kinds of creatures. So I, I, did you have any expertise in the matter once you saw that infections were happening? Well, you probably know how I feel about kids, right? Kids, they're our future. Yes, you're a giant. I fan. love them. I think kids are great. You knew that, right? I did know that. Yes, it's, it's also very, in the file. Very uh, caring towards children. Excellent. And so I saw a little Danny Renfro running around, troublemaker. And uh, I had a hunch, you know, after Mr. Satin White Suit Tux Man got liquefied, I thought, all right, who's the next flashiest person here? And there's Pam Walker wearing a mermaid tail. And uh, Jane Lee in her cotton candy dress halfway through its transformation, I thought, well, shit, shit. You know, we got a little, a little troublemaker <laughs> kid summoning a marionette. Uh, we got to get a distraction in here. Otherwise, we're going to have a whole bunch of marionetted people. It was a fantastic group of uh, you know, Tom Ford was there. Wow. Who was he? You know, I, I always forget which one he is. So that's that's actually I wouldn't know if you told me for sure. Oh, I'm not sure either. You know, one of the things is I can't always tell when they're there, there, you know, there, there. You know what I mean? Like if they're in my head or they're outside my head. Yes. It was, I... it was, it was a it was a so anyway, I changed out of my typical outfit. I have a lot of things in the back of my converted Dodge Ram. And so, uh... Yeah, what what kind of conversion did you do to your Dodge Ram? You've mentioned that before. Uh, I did a lot of things to it. 
Uh, it's got a nice pop-up tent in the back. Uh, really, really cool thing where you pull out the ramp in the back and you can actually put a portable hot tub on it. I've got werewolf chains. I've got a laboratory back there, um, forensics stuff, uh, chemistry, you name it. Plus, I've got a kegerator and, uh, you know, just the basics. That is, that is quite the back. That is a pretty big truck, it sounds like. Hmm. You'd be surprised what good packing will get you. It's a veritable Tetris game, I imagine. Mm. You said that you decided to distract the creature before I let you take a break for a moment. How did you distract the marionetter? Well, so I, I pulled out one of my, <laughs> I've got this oh gorgeous dress that I like to wear. It's uh, sort of like, uh, imagine a dragon and then imagine a fake dragon. Don't imagine a real dragon. You know what dragons look like in actuality, right? But imagine like a, a Disney well, dragon. It's which kind of dragon? Are you talking about Eastern dragons or Western dragons? I'm, I'm talking about Western fictional. Okay. Not, not realistic Eastern dragons. God. No, 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 no. I, and I, and I, and I hesitate to even use dragon because some people think, well, it's amphibious, but no. Anyway, so I have this beautiful dress on it's sequins and it's got these long, like, um, Oh, like ribbon type things. And it's a high neck situation. I mean, gorgeous, big train. So I just busted a move, brought my binoculars out there. And I said, Jane, we got to start dancing. And uh, so we started dancing. What kind of dance did you do? Yeah, I, I kind of do like a little like a, and then I do a little, you know, and then I do like a, like this, and then maybe a little, you know. It's quite rhythmic. I imagine it did a pretty good job. Yeah, and I like to flap my arms a bit. I can see why it was distracted. Uh, thank you for your report, Agent Bishop. I will speak to you again shortly, I'm sure. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> I wanted to check back in with Agent Lee before I, I reviewed more footage from our historical uh, agent. Uh, I hadn't heard from Lee in a little bit, and I wanted to see how she had, if she had been infected by the sleeping sickness or, or the dancing sickness, I should say, um, not the Spanish flu. And if she understood Bishop's move and if they were able to get her to contain the creature that had been located at the Rose Garden Shave of Color exhibits, uh, Agent Lee. Oh my God. I love Winona. She is so cool. When she offered to give me a ride to this art exhibit, I almost peed my undies. You know what I mean? Like I was just oh, so excited. And like, I thought she'd get dressed up and she didn't. But when the marionette came out and everyone was kind of like intrigued by what was happening, she disappeared for a good like 15 minutes and came back in the most beautiful dress I've ever seen. I lost my mind. I, and then she like looked at me and then went like, she wanted to dance with me. And then something like, I don't know what it was, but I was feeling this rhythm. And then like the two of us got like, not face to face, but back to back. And I could feel like her breath was my breath and our shoulders were like shimmying, you know? And she was doing a little bit of this and a little bit of this. And then I don't know what happened between my dress, cotton candy material and what she was wearing, but they started like melding together in some way. The dresses we, melted together. Yes. And our bodies, like, it felt like my arms and her arms were, like, attached. And anytime she made a move, I made a move. And I'd wiggle my arm and she wiggled her arm. And it felt almost like I couldn't really control it, but I could. It was like a Ouija board. You know what I mean? And then, like, it was like this, it felt like I was part of this octopus like beautiful galactic being. And then as we were dancing and called by the spirit, we were lifted off the ground. And 
but not in a scary way. Like it didn't feel like I was being liquefied at all. It almost felt like the dance we were doing was the antidote to the dancing sickness. Interesting. I was planning on speaking with Kandake again, but I didn't, I, while I was speaking to Agent Lee, I managed to get a strange tip from one of our field agents, Agent J. Pistol. Um, Agent Bishop? Mm hmm. I'm sorry to bother you, but I have been told by anonymous source that you have been keeping a secret from our fellow agents. Yeah. I have been keeping a secret. You know, I was out on the dance floor with Jane and uh, we were feeling that rhythm. It's fun to dance. You know, dancing is one of the best ways to transport yourself spiritually to the ether realm and connect with the past and the future all at once. Dancing, uh, dancing just moves you, moves your spirit. And uh, we were feeling it. And um, so it was my husband. <clears throat> my husband who is always with me because he's a ghost that lives in my body. You're possessed by your own husband. Yeah. And it's beautiful. Yeah, George and I met in the field and it was just one of those moments and I let him in. I, uh, I fell in love. He's over 500 years old. Anyway, he, um, he understands, you know, me. And while I'm never alone, because there's always voices, I was always lonely. Um, when George came into my life, that stopped. So, yeah, George. So he's dancing with us too. And sometimes when George dances, there's a little floating that happens. I'm not gonna say it was a threesome, but it was almost that. I was going to ask if you and Agent Lee have filed paperwork for acknowledging the physicality. Never mind, it's not my place. Um, was the dancing and the involvement of your husband the reason that it counteracted the the work of the marionette, or was that just a fun yeah. coincidence? No, it's not a coincidence at all. Uh, you know, the marionette, as as we were saying earlier, is a spirit realm creature, and so it does require an empty vessel. And so uh, George was uh, inhabiting me, and I was maybe inhabiting Jane, and the dance was moving us all, and so. Uh, it tried to stick its tentacle fingers into us and uh, was promptly rebuffed. Indeed. Well, thank you for that. Got Detailed. It. Yes. You're so polite. Thank you. Huh. Do you want to get a beer? Possibly when when we're done. Once I am no longer in a position of authority over the situation, I would consider this. Yes, I like your vibe. Thank you. I I like your vibe as well, and I I have to admit I'm deeply curious to see this truck of yours. So, oh, we'll see. Oh, I'm sorry if I pushed a boundary. I did not mean to. Right. Right. All right, well, in, enjoy your dancing. I was going to speak to Kendake again. However, Daniel Renfro suddenly was very insistent that I speak with him. So I, I checked back in with him to find out what our junior agents had to say about the matter. Um, I, I've been thinking about what you were saying and uh, I think it's important that you know that that the guy that got liquefied, he um, the marionette usually only kills people that are really bad. 
and that guy was a really bad guy. And then other than that, people just danced and, and um, he allows people to sort of open themselves to the higher realm while they dance. Um, and so he's not really that bad of a guy. The Interesting. He, um, sometimes if somebody is particularly open, he'll bring them into the spirit realm with them. Uh, but they have to be willing to do that. I see. Well, but otherwise people dance and have a good time. Well, Junior Agent Renfro, be that as it may, I do believe that due to the, let me speak plainly here, if you will understand me, due to the arrangement in the truce that allows your presence amongst these agents, I do think that it might be wise in the future if you took on a little more caution before summoning creatures that cause the death of other beings. Whether they are good or bad people or not, it is not your duty to play executioner amongst the humans. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I like your hat. Thank you. I did want to check back in with Kandake. She was giving us a lot of her time, despite being a queen and having much duties to her to attend to, so I wanted to make sure she had any final thoughts on the matter before I wrapped up and checked in with Walker again. Hello, Kendake. Hello. Hello. I want to finish telling you how I defeated Peter. Yes, thank you. I would appreciate that information very much. Okay. It might uh, be very relevant to my agents. Yes, I want to help Great Oracle in any way I can. So, uh, at this birthday party, Samil was suspended in midair, being dangled and marionetted, you might say, by this creature. And everyone else started to be swept up with its, its tentacles with fingers on the end. And I realized that they were all chaotically moving. And maybe if I could get them to move together, that would help uh, distract the creature and, and give me an, an edge, an advantage in defeating it. And so I started a dance, a new type of dance that no one had done before, where I just kind of did two steps to the left and two steps to the right, and then to the front, to the back, to the side and twist. And I said, follow me, everybody, follow me. And so we started doing this and it was almost like a slide or like a two step or something like that. I don't know. Um, and so we all i got the whole room doing this and sure enough the the creature was very confused it didn't know where to look and it was losing the grip of some people but it still had samil and so when it was distracted i ran to the front of the room i always have my bow and arrow with me because i am a warrior queen queen and you never know who's trying to assassinate your children and so must be I, a constant trouble for you i apologize you have to deal with that. It's okay, I'm a very good archer, so I always kill the person who's trying to kill my children. Yes, our file about you says that. Yes. Uh, so I pull out a bow from, and uh, I load it into my arrow, uh, my, you know, that thing, the bow, and I launch an arrow into its eye, dead center into its center eye, and it squeals, and then it let go of everybody, and then it flew away. And that's how I it see. Did. That is very good information, thank you. That would be very relevant to our current situation. Thank you so much. Your Highness, your time is obviously very precious to you. So I, I will bid you adieu and thank you so much for all the information you've given us. And may your family's reign be long and prosperous. Thank you very much. Oh, great Oracle, thank you. Uh, I must go and have my ceremonial bath tonight, so. That is, I'm sure, very relaxing, thank you. It is. I did want to check in with Agent Walker. She had been through quite the ordeal. I hope that she was okay. Agent Walker, how how are you feeling? A little ashamed, a little better, a little, uh, I should have, I shouldn't, I, I'm sorry. I, I should have, I should have just, I should have just gone. I, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank, I'm so, thank you for asking. How are you? 
Well, I, I would like to advise you to not feel ashamed. I think that what happened to you was not your fault. And I, I don't think you should blame yourself for it. Something something took hold of you against your will, which is a violation. And you should not feel the effects of, of victimhood for that. So um, you... If you need some leave, we will be happy to grant it to you. Uh, it is it is part of the the dorm system to make sure that our agents are being taken care of. So if you need rest Ma'am, and R and R, you understand me. I I feel ashamed that I've been so closed off to kinship and friendship and oh accepting others for who they are and dancing when I have the opportunity to and being grateful that I could put on a dress sometimes and then put on civvies. Agent Jane Lee isn't a bad kid. She's just, when you're 20, you think you know everything, you know? Well, that is not the answer I expected from you, but it is quite a kind one. So I will amend a lot of details in my reports. Thank you. Oh no, you. You, that report remains. She, she was super unprofessional during the entire event, but oh, okay, very who well. am I to judge protocol and, and, and approach? I'm, I'm not always, gonna handle things right. I might have shot down that marionette before I was possessed by it, but that doesn't mean I wasn't possessed. The residual effects have changed me, just like the effects of the women that I work with changed me. Well, I think that is good. I think the effects of those around us should change us. We should be affected by the people around us and I really would like to put in a request that we have Milagros back. I feel bad for, this is not a personal reflection on you. Milagros is our family. I I have no intention of holding this position longer. I am, I am simply an independent counsel who is doing an investigation while Milagros is on leave. You she do does her best at all times and no one's perfect. I understand that. Well, someone is perfect, but I understand that. And your love of your appreciation for your profile will be added to my record. Thank you very much, Agent Walker. Well, this is acting profiler Seraphine Goddard, outside consultant G324. I believe that I am ready to make my report. It appears the creature at hand was a spirit being uh, known as a marionette that had been summoned by Agent Daniel Renfro uh, in his capacity as a junior agent attempting to to stir up a bit of chaos and perhaps judge the guilty living uh, a little beyond what his arrangements with Dorm allows him to do. Uh, perhaps this mischievous sprite shall be reined in a little more for future reasons. Uh, the creature puppeteers beings and holds them at the end of a series of tentacles attached to its three heads. Um, it uses the tentacles, which appear to be fingerprint, look like fingertips, to drain its victims of their stuffing, for lack of a better word. Um, it was attracted to the crowd at the Rose Garden Shape of Color event, and it looks like it comes from another realm, and it looks like it could be defeated simply by attacking it in its eyes, which would make it flee. It appears that one of the being's eyes was attacked on sight by Agent Walker, and I will advise Agent Bishop, who I know to be an effective uh, agent, to track down the one that is currently attacking the facility and make sure that it is taken care of and contained as well. So it appears this case of the marionette has been solved. And with regards to my evaluation of this dorm branch office, while I find their methods suspect and their protocols highly unorthodox and a quite high amount of, of violations of interpersonal protocol, um, I cannot deny the effectiveness of their operation. While outside interests like my own may be keeping a closer eye on this branch, I shall recommend allowing them to deal with the matter of profiler Milagros Kendall's uh, description, discrepancy internally and allow them to police the matter further themselves. Um, at this point, I would like to thank some of our special agents 
that helped out with tonight's case. Of course, I want to thank our historical agent, Kandake uh, Duwana, for her help. I also want to thank our agents, Puck90, Mary the Chief, Arsenal Roy 2K, and of course, Jay Pistol, for their vital information bringing this case together. And I don't believe that any agents claimed the special training protocols that we had in place for Monster Hearts 2. So those will be available, I believe, uh, for future. Um, I don't have a name for that agent. I may be not being given the information. So hopefully the agency chat protocols will solve that issue themselves. Uh, in closing, this is acting profiler Sarah Goddard, consultant. 6324 for case number 613, signing off.